Take it away. Okay, uh, in our meetings, occasionally we are, we are blessed with the company of Lawrence Mitchell, who is an antique expert, who occasionally puts uh, stamps, postal history, and uh, postcards, leads our way when he goes around the antique sales all over the UK and many parts of Europe, and indeed America from time to time. So Lawrence, Joseph, Robert, myself, Stephen, we are today planning ahead for uh, future trips and uh, if I can start off with Lawrence, um, would well, you have any uh, auctions in the UK that you're doing in the near future for antiques? Well, I'm always, I'm always going to auctions, um, uh, looking for rare pieces to, to buy, and um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite challenging at, at, at times because one never knows what what's, one is going to find. Well, obviously, a lot of one can view on the internet, uh, but the one great problem what the internet can't uh, do for you is that is that if you see a good lot you really need to handle it to get a feel for it it's uh, because uh, for instance I, I specialize in ceramics and whilst I have a very good overall knowledge sometimes if it's something which is a little bit unusual a little bit rare I've actually physically got to handle I've got to look at the glaze the actual piece itself and it will tell me a lot more about it than what I can actually see no matter how good photography is on the internet. Have you got, uh, how much experience do you have in uh, Asian uh, horses? Uh, that's a very difficult field. Asian is very, very difficult because of the fakes. For instance, uh, quite recently there was a jar which purportedly sold in an auction in the Midlands for just under one million pounds. Looking at the photograph, not just myself, but a number of other experts, we decided that it's fake. So, because it's advertised as selling, doesn't mean to say that it gets paid for. And a lot of pieces which actually will sell at auction, many auctioneers are finding that they can't get paid. Expertisation. Mm -hmm. Expertisation. The, the, the problem is that it, of, of, the, one of the major problems is that there's a lot of Chinese who are coming here and actually entering the goods themselves. <laughs> really? Well, that is something I'd never considered. And mm -hmm. therefore, um, what are the buyer's protections in, say, such a scenario when a huge price is paid on a, on a description that was very broad? Um, very, very interesting talking talk about um, a, a friend of mine actually uh, bought a vase uh, for around about £100 that he bought in Italy and he put it onto eBay and, he, and from what I understand sold it for £87,000 but he hasn't been able to be pay, get paid because PayPal decided it's too much money for them to want to handle <laughs> but whether but Maybe they don't want to get involved in the... Uh, Whether it is uh, like a refund car, oh, yeah, yeah. In the actual legalities or, or the actual ordeal. One of the major problems uh, that vendors face using PayPal or using eBay, for instance, there's no protection for dealers at all. If they, if it, say it goes over to China, mm -hmm. that Chinese would decide for whatever reason that it's got damage or it hasn't even arrived. Mm -hmm. We experienced People. that with stamps as well in a big in a big way on eBay. Yeah. You know, I, I, I lost um, eight hundred pounds, even though I had actually a certificate from the post office saying that they had delivered it, PayPal or rather eBay awarded the buyer. The benefit a refund. Of the yes, I understand. But just to be clear for our, those watching this video, we're not just referring to China, of course. This is not a specific China. This is a phenomenon that could occur in any collectibles, any, any collectibles in any part of the world. Yeah. Uh, but I take your point that there might be, um, especially in the instance but of... I mean, I haven't had that much problems myself with the Chinese on any other occasion. Um, but the problem is I had one particular Chinese well, it wasn't on a particularly expensive pair of bars, it's a very, very common pattern for about £300 where he'd attempted to draw on a felt tip pen, this is where the crack is, <laughs> and, and I refused to um, acknowledge, I, I, I just they decided he was putting a fast one, and I never heard anything else from him. Well, I wonder if there are parallels here, Joseph and Robert, can you tell us about uh, your experiences sending abroad, 
uh, stamps, uh, do you send it by registered mail, or how do you uh, go about sending on your internet? Your, both you have your own respective internet businesses. Uh, Ida or Philip If it's above twenty pounds, we always insist on registered, and we always get proof of posting on anything. Anything. And have you had problems? Despite of course, I have, have, have actually had problems. Um, cert there are certain countries seem to happen uh, a lot in. Although I would say that uh, overseas, like America, and Australia, and uh, Germany, such countries and Scandinavia are, are very good to have little uh, problems. Um, but I have uh, had pieces, and I have been told by people that in some countries, perhaps in some areas of Europe. It could be that the support system is just slow and the person actually says it hasn't arrived but it will actually be delivered at a later date. Uh -huh. Things like that have happened. Uh, I have had items disappear uh, in Asia that have been tracked by even reputable uh, deli delivery companies. So it does happen. But as a policy, if it's over £20, uh, it is always tracked. And I will actually look at the customer detail and record and make judgments uh, on, on dispatch in the future. Case. Do, you, do, you have a, do you have a right to refuse a bit? Uh, I believe so. If there is actually uh, a level of uh, yes. negative feedback mm -hmm. or um, unpaid items on the on the account, Robert, I think that's right. It's been cancelled. You can block things. And you can block. Yeah. It, it, very, that's a very interesting point. Which I don't do. Like I would. I, would, I, I do had a. Uh, we're going back probably about ten years ago. A case where I was uh, had put an item into an auction in Germany and um, and. Uh, I, I, I know the auctioneer, he got, and I got a phone call that, um, and we're, we're talking about a five-figure amount, okay. where uh, I see to Lawrence, I'm not selling it to the uh, buyer because I'm dubious about his um, credit, uh, credit um, but um, I have your items sold to the underbidder, and I, and I gratefully respected his, his judgment and um, it got paid quite quickly. Right, that's interesting. And uh, in fact, uh, Rob, you, you had in your business um, Sussex Stamps, all part of the Addison Brighton Group, incidentally, but you had a very interesting experience where I think you sold uh, several hundred pounds, six, seven hundred pounds of material to one individual on several lots. Um, and one of the lots, I think, was for 12 pounds or something of this nature. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was um, in dispute for some reason or another. And did that cause PayPal to block the six to seven hundred pound payment yeah, being made. Yeah, they all from twelve pounds into all sorts of. That seems unfair. You know, I even had an issue with actually the sale of. Uh, no, no, it's like, sorry. It was a private purchase uh, by myself of a Spanish American War item, but because Cuba was actually referenced in the description, my account was briefly uh, suspended, and I had to actually say to PayPal because of the embargo with uh, Cuba goods, I had to say that this is a historical item actually ironically sent by an American soldier about 110 years ago and that was resolved but uh, things like that happen as well. I, th I think uh, if you can um, is to, is to try, try and avoid getting paid by PayPal because of... But it's ubiquitous isn't it? PayPal seems to be... Underpins the, the uh, internet economy. Yeah, yeah. However there's a new app which is tech going to take over from PayPal. Oh, tell us more, please. Oh, please. Uh, um, it, and I, I've got a feeling it's, um, it, it may, uh, it might be a colleague called, uh, of Twitter, but um, mm -hmm. I, I might be wrong, very, very wrong, but he's power, power me mega money school square. Okay. okay. And I've actually just um, downloaded the app. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and there are very, very various ways you actually, actually can um, operate the, um, Transaction. Do you know if it links into eBay yet? Sorry? Does it link with eBay? Like PayPal is yet? Or? No, I okay. don't. I, we'll I, I, I honestly don't know. That's okay. worth um, will, pursuing. Will you let us know in future vlogs as to how that went? I'm yeah. sure that our people are interested. Right, we're going to wrap this up for the moment and just to say thank you for the benefit of your opinions and more soon. Good.